So today I'm going to go through object creation for your Fab Totem. Here are a few programs I'm going to be using. I use SolidWorks for the actual design of the item itself. Blender is used for that. It's a free program available online. I mostly use Blender to convert between different file formats because it's better than that than SolidWorks is. Slicer is what you need to turn a 3D object into G-code, which is what's needed for the printer. And I use a G-code simulator to test exactly how long the print will take and to see where support material and rough material is placed. A link for all the free software will be available in the description below. Before we open up the Fabtotem interface, I'm going to quickly design something in SolidWorks. So I've quickly just churned out a doorstop in SOLIDWORKS. I'm now going to save it as an STL as that's the format that you really need to use. Either STL or OBJ. However, SOLIDWORKS doesn't export to OBJ, so I'm stuck with STL. Now that's done, you import it into Slicer. Have a quick look to see if all the details are still there. Now I'm using ABS and I spent all day yesterday experimenting with the settings required to make it work properly with the fam totem. So I'm going to quickly go through the settings that I use which work. However they may be different for you as it does vary from material to material and different colours can also make a difference. So these are the settings which work for me. So first up we've got three perimeters, with my experimentation that's thick enough for this printer. Be it I leave default. The brim is quite important with ABS. Don't worry about the skirt because the Fab Totem's got an enclosed unit. You don't need the skirt because the skirt is mainly there to stop drafts and the, the bottom left from contracting too much. However, because ABS has got a low coefficient of friction, it doesn't stick very well to the glass bed. So to get over that, what I've done is add a big fat brim to the first layer to act like an anchor. I found that 5mm works okay, however you may have different results depending on the exact ABS. I usually have no support material generated, but that does vary from model to model. If you have a lot of overhang on your model, you might need it. The raft layer I have is 3, again to act like an anchor on the base. That's it for that section. On the filament, I found that for ABS, because it's slippery, I need an extruder factor of at least 1.1, and I usually increase that during the print itself, depending on how well it's feeding. The temperature of the extruder for ABS, I use its maximum, which is 230, and the same for the bed. With the fan, you don't want it on for ABS. However, if you uncheck these two options, it will stay turned on by, by default inside the Fabtotem, so set the min-max to zero and then the bed settings are the ones which are default for the Fabtotem. So when you're done you click export g-code and save it in the file location you want. It will now generate g-code. Depending on the power of your PC and the complexity of the model this may take a while. So the file has been exported. Now what I could do next, which is not necessary, but I find quite useful, is open up the G-code simulator. So I load up the file, and it runs through it, telling you how long it will take to print roughly. It's quite a good simulation. So this says it's going to take 2 hours 40 minutes, and it's going to have 8 meters of extrusion. That doesn't mean 8 meters of filament, it just means 8 meters of extrusion coming out of the head. 
It also gives you details like your weight and the dimensions. It shows you how many layers, the thickness, the overall dimensions. And as you can see, because it's added the raft material and the base material, it's longer and wider and taller than it was inside SolidWorks. This is very useful to be able to see how the print will be done, and it will also show you how the infill is done, where the honeycombing, for example, is, any support material, that's the base layer, the hole at the end that I put, and you can begin to see the lettering forming. Honeycomb is a very cool structure because it works in alternating layers. First it goes in one direction, then it goes in the alternate direction, so you get an interlocking pattern. And there we have the entire print. So that lets me know there won't be any problems uh, and everything's going to go okay. But the next step is to open up the Fab Totem interface. Now I have mine hooked up directly to my PC with an Ethernet cable, so the IP address that I use is slightly different from the one you'd use over the Wi-Fi. And check that out, there's my other videos being retweeted. So as you can see from this, I did a lot of failed prints yesterday whilst I was experimenting with the ABS settings. This particular one at the top was doing very well, however, when I went to sleep, I woke up and then it had frozen and it had crashed. So once you're here, you go into Object Manager, which on the dashboard is just there, but persistently it's on the left there in the menus. Create yourself a new folder. You can give it a description of whatever you want. I've already created one that's just called Stuff and has a few things in it. So click Add File. Browse to your file, just select it and then click save. Now mine went very quick as I said because I'm connected directly via Ethernet. On Wi-Fi it takes quite a bit longer. And then you can click on it and there are several useful features. The first one is just click to print. You can download the file in case you ever lose it and you also have a G-code viewer. At the moment it's processing because I just imported it. But that's what it looks like. So you can see the broom and the raft there quite clearly. And you can also see the honeycomb structure inside. And the hole and the lettering. I think that one day I shall use some transparent stuff so that you can see the honeycomb because it's a very cool look. And then you click print. So that was the video. The next video is going to be printing. Uh, if you liked it, click like, uh, leave a comment, subscribe to see more in the future and click that little advert that popped up because it gives me a little bit of advertising revenue even if all you do is close it straight away. See you next time.